Hi everybody, welcome to another Scryful Shenanigans episode. These are coming thick and fast because I'm just really getting into doing them at the moment. So I'm on a bit of a jag with them. And this time around, uh, we're going to go back in time again. So the last video I did was um, around Scars and Mirrodin. And so I think we'll go back to Ice Age and look at some lands. So we'll start off with everything apart from the basic lands or the however you want to call them, the basic, basic lands. Um, so I'm going to firstly look at those 18 cards in the set that were either snow covered lands or non basic lands. And at the end, I'll zoom in a little bit more and we'll have a look at the basic land artwork because there were multiple copies of that or yeah multiple uh, different different artwork three different types of artwork so here's the 18 cards that we're gonna slice and dice through so yeah we've got five uh so yeah there's there's three cycles i suppose that's the way of thinking in the set um there's these five snow covered lands so the plains, the islands, the swamps, the mountains, and the snow-covered forest. We've also got dual lands in Ice Age, of which there are sort of two cycles, but both of the cycles, interestingly enough, are allied colours. So you have these lands. So there's Adakar Wastes, Underground rivers, sulphur springs, brushland, and did I miss one? Oh, yeah, there we go. Carpulson Forest, where you can tap them for colourless manner, but if you tap them for uh, either of the coloured manners then they deal one damage to you and then there's the other cycle but it's still the same two colours which are these depletion lands using depletion counters so if there aren't any depletion counters on them then they don't untap during your untap phase and at the beginning of your upkeep you remove a depletion counter from land cap so yeah if there are any depletion counters on land cap it does not untap during your untap phase at the beginning of your upkeep remove a depletion counter from land cap tap add white germanopal put a depletion counter on land cap and tap blue to add, uh, add blue germanopal put a depletion counter on land cap and so again you can see there are four others in addition to land cap for each of the four other allied colours. So there's the blue black one, which is River Delta. Then we've got Lava Tubes, which is the black red one. And Timberline Ridge, which is the red green one. And then we have Velt, which is the white green one. In addition, you can see we've also got Glacial Chasm Halls of Mist and Ice Flow, which aren't part of a, a cycle in this set. So let's go through these and slice them up a little bit more. Um, but before we do that, we'll do like I normally do. We just look at the prices. So this is in price order. And it gives us a chance to just also see how maybe the rules text has been slightly altered, either to simplify it or clarify or whatever. So you can see we've got simplifications here with the errata text. You'll also notice that Sulphur Springs, if we were to look at um, all of the reprints beyond just what's on the screen, because it goes up a lot further, um, you can see that, yeah, it's been reprinted quite a number of times with different artwork. But in the set, this is the most expensive card when you consider it alongside or oh, sorry, yeah, out of the lands, including the um, 
snow lands but not including the basic lands and we're going to look at the basic lands at the end then we've got glacial chasm interesting isn't it that here they've really expanded out the um, errata text so you've got reminder text in here about how the cumulative upkeep bit works um, so there's this sort of wedging in here you see so here they've added in this reminder text on the errata version not sure I don't know if you can see there so that's the version from from the vault realms which is the only other time it's been reprinted in paper so yeah cumulative upkeep pay to life when glacial chasm enters sacrifice a land creature control can't attack and uh, prevent all damage that will be dealt to you so on the original card you've got cumulative upkeep to life when glacial chasm it comes into play sacrifice land you cannot attack just says and all damage dealt to you is reduced by zero Here's some um, other car wastes, 12 bucks. Again, you can see, like the one we saw at the, the first one, same thing, same cycle. Underground River, 10. Carl Paulson Forest, it's 966 nine, uh, brushlands. So, yeah, all of these lands of the same cycle have bubbled to the surface. This is 567. Then we get Hall of Mists, $3.60. Another card with cumulative upkeep on it. This one has got a cumulative upkeep of one. Slight rewording here of the, the rules text. And then we've got some snow covered islands. So the most expensive one here is 320. Yep, snow covered island. And you can see the next time that uh, magic of the Go magic magic of the coast magic the gathering got involved with um, snow covered lands would be cold snap and then it started sort of appearing here and there we had it in modern horizons caldine secret lair drop jump start so we've got the swamp at 184 um, this one's 176 which is the forest one and we've got the plains 137 um, the mountain at 132 and then we've got depletion lands so you can see with these again slightly I suppose what simplified the wording for the mana generation bit but it looks like I mean again it's just like swapping around a bit here this looks like pretty much identical doesn't it here at the beginning upkeep remove a depletion counter from Velt, Velt but yeah Velt does not untap during your untap step if it has a depletion counter on it as opposed to if there are an, if if there are any depletion counters on Velt it does not untap during your untap phase so just rephrasing there and then condensing down a bit here, simplifying it into the add green or white, put a depletion counter on Velt. Then we get River Delta, which is the blue black one, Lava Tubes, which is the black red one, Lava Cat, oh uh, sorry, Lava Cap, Land Cap, which is white blue, Timberline Ridge, that's um, red green. Ice flow is one that's outside of the cycles. So this is this was only ever reprinted in fifth edition. It's quite cool artwork. Fifth edition. I like this one though. So you may choose not to untap ice flow during your untap phase. Yep. Pretty much the same there. 
and then tap, tap target creature without flying that is attacking you. As long as Ice Flow remains tapped, that creature does not untap during its controller's untap phase. So they've condensed that a little bit, I suppose. Reworded it. And there we have it. That's it. So let's just look at these sort of by rarity so you can get a rough idea of where these sort of fall in the on the in the rarity side of things. So oh yeah, all of the snow covered planes in terms of thinking about them from their rarity perspective and how you know how often they turned up in packs because they were obviously a special type of basic land um they're you know roughly speaking and i've mentioned this before how you know you, you're sort of looking at um rarity now through a more uh specific lens where you know you have common uncommon and rare as the three types but it wasn't quite as simple as that and i did go through i think in a previous episode and sort of explain you know there were different levels of um or different frequencies sorry of how cards appeared on a um on a print sheet that would affect within their rarity um their actual chance of a sort of appearing in a pack so it's a little bit more complicated, but once we, you know, re-view that through, you know, how modern rarity is done, these sort of fall into that that common, um, that common slot, if you like. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll include a link to the MTG Wiki article in here, so you can sort of look up, and it should have lots of information about how the rarity was aligned there for, for Ice Age if, you, if you, you're interested in those sort of things so yeah this is uh, I, you know, I, I loved unfortunately and I am going to include links to um, videos that I've done about Ice Age on the channel but the most unfortunate thing and the thing I regret and I thought I'd filmed it, um, but I never filmed me opening packs of Ice Age. I've got the cards and I've done videos going through the artwork, but I can't find on the channel um, any pack openings I did, which is unfortunate because I did open some, um, what would they be called? They're not quite right to call them tournament decks, but they would be starter packs and some boosters as well I genuinely thought I'd film them but yeah obviously not um so yeah so that's unfortunate um because back when I bought those uh, the nice thing was and this would have been in the early 2010s uh you know prices on packs of Ice Age and the starter decks were not egregious they sort of you know pretty fair price for the packs Sadly, that would not be the case now. So it was pretty nice to open these in their sort of, you know, natural form. Now, if we just drill down into this, you, you're going to see some, you know, rules information around snow lands yeah just as sort of clarification so it's a super type not a card type it has no rules meaning or function by itself but spells and abilities may refer to it and then you can see here it it's not on the original card um, but later on you may have become aware of cards which feature these you know, special snow symbols so it has a note here about that now if we were to look at other stuff you know it's not going to show necessarily on it here but what you will do is you will find that there are cards that may have this symbol on them to indicate um you know, a certain type of manner 
So you've got this sort of snow manor symbol is a generic manor symbol. It represents a cost that can be paid by one manor that was produced by a snow source. That manor can be any colour or colourless. Okay. Snow isn't a type of manor. If an effect says you may spend manor as though it were any type, you can't pay for um, snow manor using manor that wasn't produced by a snow source. Some cards have additional effects for each snow mana spent to cast them. You can cast these spells even if you don't spend any snow mana to cast them. Their additional effects simply won't do anything. The Caledheim set, Caledheim set does not have any cards with mana costs that include snow mana symbols, but some previous sets do. If an effect such as a spell costs one less to cast, that reduction does not apply to any snow mana costs. This is also true for activated abilities that include snowman in their activation costs and effects that reduce those costs. In a limited event, usually booster draft or sealed deck, you can't add snow basic snow lands to your card pool as you would other basic lands. You can play the snow lands only if you opened them in your sealed deck or drafted them. So, so yeah, so it's good. It's nice when you know the rules text has rules about. The use of the snow symbol on other cards so although the snow symbol doesn't appear on the actual basic snow lands it will appear on cards which have to use or specifically are using snow mana and so it's, it's really useful about um, you know references to those sorts of cards Go in here, see what we have. Yeah, so here's some later ones. Yeah, some, some from uh, Cold Snap. There's the ones from uh, Caldine. I was just going to see here if there was anything where where it had that symbol. Maybe I'll go into the synergistic cards. Oh, there you go. Look, there's there, so scrying sheets generates um, colorless mana, but also has a, an ability that consumes or use, uses um, snow mana. So it could be paid from one mana from from a snow source. So yeah, that's what it looks like in situ. So obviously a big difference between the artwork for the Cold Snap Snow Covered Lamp Forest and the Ice Age. Um, yeah, completely different uh, era of magic. I mean, obviously there's a whole story behind this. I'm not going to go into it, but uh, the whole made up story about how the Cold Snap set came about. Um, but it's an you know it's an interesting set to see how you try and create a set which has the feel I suppose of a set that's a hell of a lot earlier. Okay, so we'll look at the these lands first of all. We'll look at um, glacial chasm and ice flow. Uh, they're uncommon, so we'll look at the uncommon lands first, and then we'll move on and look at the rares. I've subdivided the rares as well, because there's two distinct types there. So yeah, these aren't part of a cycle, these ones. So Glacial Chasm. Yeah. 
when the enter's ability resolves, if you don't control any other lands, you must sacrifice Glacial Chasm itself. What have we got? So damage prevention, drawback, mannerless lands, sacrifice outlet land, damage prevention you, sacrifice cost land and upkeep cost. So let's try and focus on the land, more of the land uh, stuff things. So yeah, the, there's early on in magic, um, you know, lands that don't generate mana was a thing um, if you haven't seen uh, episodes I've done before on sets I have this has come up before because occasionally you will see them in later sets but there were quite a number of them in um, yeah there were quite a number of them in legends you can see here we got one two three four five six although you know, essentially, we've got a cycle here, you can see. Uh, we got a few from dark, the dark, and there were some in Arabian Nights. We've got this one, which is interesting. I have this. So this is a Harper, uh, Harper Prison book promo one. There's a number of these, actually. Uh, there's a badger, and I'm trying to remember what else as well. Then we've got the ones we're looking at. And then of course these lands, the sack lands, fall into that category because they don't generate mana. They you sack them to hunt down um cards that do. And this was around the time of Mirage. And then We've got the onslaught ones where so these ones came into play tapped these ones didn't but for these ones you have to pay one life for the privilege of them not coming to play tapped and i'm talking about the original you know the actual discard itself coming to play tap not the the land you've searched out for and then of course we get up to things like dark depths we have terramorphic expanse and then later evolving wilds which is functional reprint but then you'll notice that in addition to onslaught lands where you pay one life which um, if you look you can see there the allied colors you've got the enemy colored ones of zendikar and i was actually very tempted when i was sort of thinking about doing another episode on lands beyond just talking about basic lands um, i was very tempted to, to to look at lands around zendikar and that block um, but i decided not to because i've already done several videos on Zendikar um, and um, yeah so and I've you know I'm planning on doing one on World Wake so yeah I'm gonna have to sort of um, stretch those out a bit but no doubt I'm, I'm gonna revisit Zendikar through the lens of the um, the lands that were in there the non-basic lands and we also it's a good excuse to, to have, a, have a look again at the, the full artwork as well and then you've got other things like um, Vesuva as well, which comes into uh, play as a copy of a chosen land, which is an interesting way of doing things. Uh, this one we've got a, a land that tutors for colourless creature cards and also makes colourless Eldrazi spells. You cast two less to cut. Uh, two cost two less to cast. Yep. The sack land, some more sack lands as well. So yeah, it looks like yeah, most of a, a lot of these that came along later in Magic um, were 
didn't generate mana because they were sacked lands and they you sacked them and then they went out and and um, tutored for a particular you searched out for a particular type of uh, card and again notice these reference you know forest mountain they don't say basic um, which is quite important because as you probably know there are some cards which are not basic lands but actually have the word forest or plains or whatever on, on in in here in the description so that's pretty useful so they're searchable as well so not just basic lands which would have the the land type in here so yeah whereas this does you see this specifically says basic land some of these do again so this is talking about basic lands whereas these these ones are referencing basic island swamped or mountains but as we saw before these ones just say yeah island mountain forest or island whatever so, yeah. Yep, so there's nine cards in Magic, um, or nine lands that have a, you know, you've got a sack cost on them here. And just to work out you know where they were printed historically it's easy to do this there we go so there's um Olduvian trading post and we will put them on early state timeline it's a bit easier then so yeah there's the ice age and you can see here notice the ones from alliances there is one in each color but they all do something quite different in terms of their ability and you can see here you know when they come into play you have to sacrifice some form of land or bury it but the additional ability is variable and also notice that some of these add just a color of mana and some of them add one and a color. And you've got things like Lotus Veil where you have to uh, bury, what is it, sacrifice two untapped lands or bury it. Scorch Runes comes into play, sacrifice two untapped lands. This one's the three mana of any one color. And this one does four colorless mana to mana pool. And then Lotus Field from M20. Similar sort of thing, you have to sacrifice two lands. Now the other thing notice with Lotus Field, um, it doesn't specify that those two lands have to be untapped. Whereas these, you can see it does say sacrifice two untapped lands. Yep same with these you see you've got a specification here um on on this one it says sacrifice an untapped island whereas lake of the dead just says sacrifice a swamp regardless of whether it's tapped or untapped but here we can start to see the the differences so the ones where they say sacrifice an untapped mountain there's a, you get extra when you tap it. One colourless and in blue, one colourless in red. The ones that don't care about whether it's tapped or untapped. You're just sacrificing here a forest or a plains or a swamp. You just when it does come online, the mana part is just generating single colour mana. Yeah, 
know, it's fun to look at lands where they don't sort of fit into the usual, you know, um, oh, this, you know, a land of this type would usually do this or... And then we've got Sack Outlet Land as well. Slightly more of those. And then we've got Ice Flow. Yep. A few rules here. Because you know you can see here, uh, you you can choose not to untap ice a ice age ice flow during your untap phase. Tap it, tap target creature w without flying that is attacking you. As long as ice flow remains tap, that creature does not untap during its controller's untap phase. So there's all sorts of notes and rules around potential problems you could have when. You know, ice flow down taps or leaves the battlefield or, you know, those sort of things. Stuff that can change in the course of a game that could uh, have implications for it. So yeah, lockdowns. So you're locking down a creature. In this case, a creature without flying. It's another man in this land which we already looked at. So yeah, there's 92 lockdown creatures. So you've got things like Amber Prism, Blizzard, a number of different things here. You can see there's quite a lot of auras that do that or lock down a creature. But equally there's artifacts, creatures that do it, those sort of things. So interesting to see it on a land, actually. And if you were to sort of try and work out, well, how common is that? If we were to do type land. Yeah, not so. <laughs> not, not very. Now, lockdowns generally, um, if we go back out of here and go into this. So 100 lockdown cards, the permanent stays tapped. So here it's just applies to uh, any any card that does some sort of permanent so it might be possible um, that there may be other lands that knock down now again this is the only one and it's it's a creature so yeah now of course you know as you saw some of these are going to mention specifically creatures but yeah, none of these do reference permanence generally. More specific type of permanent. So. And it's doing it in this case through tapping so again you've got this category of things that act as a tapper creature okay so yeah at rare we've got two cycles we've got the cycle of these and the cycle of these so let's go into add a car waste because you know the cycle of five the tags are going to be the same so yeah, Cycle of Pain Lands, it's a pain land, it's worse than a Tundra, because with the Tundra you don't get any pain, what's a vanity card? Mm. Oh yeah, that's I see, yeah, so that's referencing somebody, character in magic, right. So 49 pain lands. So things like City of Brass, you get 
stuff like this from what was it Odyssey? It's interesting stuff here from Rugby Champions Kamigawa. Yeah, th there's some pretty cool artwork on the. Um, what was the other one? Yeah, it was there. It is there. The, this and this Centaur Garden, as well. So yeah, the cycle of pain lands, of which there are ten. And I think, as I may have mentioned, we'll look at it anyway. There we go. So if you put it by release date, there's the Ice Age ones, and there is the ones from Apocalypse. So Ice Age were the Allied ones, Apocalypse were the enemy ones. Another thing I can think you can do, so if you just talk as we're looking at some tags here, um, if we were to go, say, into Painlands, we should also be able to do something like this, I think. which if I've done this right so anything that's a pain land that is part of a cycle so what's interesting is the cycle of pain lands is a specific cycle um, which is composed of ice age and apocalypse however within the designation just pain land so yeah so as separate from pain land cycle um, there are other pain lands that are part of a, their own cycle so these ones which tend to get forgotten about these are the annoying ones which come into play tapped um they do generate colorless mana but um and you have the uh, inconvenience of still getting you know pain <laughs> so yeah these came from tempest and then as i pointed out you know there's the odyssey ones which are the monocolored ones which also have threshold on them. Now I'm trying to remember because you've got also some later stuff. So these ones where you know they've got you paying life, whereas these ones are doing damage. Um, so there's this cycle here from Modern Horizons. Then there's a cycle of, so these are, you know, dual land, two color lands, dual lands. Then there's this, another cycle of um, monocolor ones that came from where was it? Um, yeah, Hour of Devastation. And those one again, it's pay one life. But then you've got these ones here, you can see, which have sort of cropped up, but don't don't seem to be when you line them up. This although. They seem to be implying that they, that it is a part of a cycle. Um, so let's just have a quick look and see whether it's really clear. So this, so this one, which is what would you say it might be? Um, so yeah, it's it's a colourless pain land, but again, it comes into play tapped. Um, and that was from Onslaught, and you've got this one from Future Sight with the pay one life thing, does green or white, and then 
murmuring boss which does this thing business with revealing tree folk cards in your hand and what you've got here is it's a there's this cycle of future site dual lands which are all quite different which were printed in future site and it's not quite so clear here but if you do its first printing you can sort of see them in their original glory there you go but yeah they will do quite different things and one of those is so it is part of a cycle but not um not necessarily uh you know other other cards in the cycle are not pain lands also something called a horizon land um, now this is interesting because if we look at this you can see let me try and go back here so there's six here There's a green white see it's a bit of a weird one because as you probably saw when we looked at the cycle if I can go back correctly to wherever I was there we go so there they are in modern horizons but then additionally there's this card um, whereas these are all enemy colours that, that one's an allied colour so it's sort of lumped in there it's interesting it's been reprinted quite a few times actually and then Murmuring Boss what's that what's that form part of oh yeah, Law Wind Tribal Land, see. But again, it's a bit over the map. What's that one? Cycle Pain Tap Land. So another one that's sort of lumped in with another cycle. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see now. So it's a sort of extension of the Tempest ones, but for colorless. So there we go. Yep. And then. Let me try and find my way back here. We'll move on to depletion lands, I think. Let's just get rid of some of these. There we go. Yeah, depletion lands. Okay, yep, I say depletion lands. Cloud Crest Lake, similar to. So Cloud Crest, Crest Lake does doesn't use depletion counters to do a, this sort of similar thing with alternate. You know, it's available and it's not available, so making it slower, I suppose. Um, yeah, and then Falcos Lowlands. So do they have their own little name? Oh, that's it. I was trying to think of what they... So nap lands. <laughs> it's having a nap. That's funny. Yeah. So yeah, a nap land, if you've not heard that term before, because I don't think I have. I was trying to think whether is it a slow land? What's the... But yeah, nap land. So... <laughs> funny. So yeah, similar in some ways to, to the sort of Napland idea, but using depletion counters to do that. 
But yeah, I really love the artwork on these. It's gorgeous. And you know, as you saw, the price is pretty reasonable on them still. If we go into full and then it's the most expensive one velt 123 but it's funny isn't it that these are lumped these are lumped in as rare but again i'm not sure like when you start to analyze the actual rarity as it was in terms of how many were printed on a on a certain sheet how that panned out and and also what they were doing at you know during the ice age period because obviously that the whole business of the way in which they the frequency with which they printed certain cards has, has changed over time and i'm not sure at what point it went over to more of the um the the, sorry, the modern's the wrong word i suppose in this instance but just that you know the way of doing it with the much more carefully designated you know commons uncommons rares with sort of not quite so much wiggle room within those categories as you might see with our earlier sets and then because we get later on we get the introduction of mythics as well i mean utility wise i can't see any point in reprinting these but yeah i wonder whether I wonder how this would look on like modern borders. I just yeah, this, this is lovely. There you go. Very nice. Let me just crank this down a bit. <laughs> it's a bit over the top. I just want to get it so I can see this as well because it does help. So yeah, there's um in within the you know this rare silo that we're using on Scryfall, the one non-basic land in our ice age that isn't part of a, a cycle out rare is Halls of Mist. It's got cumulative upkeep on it. So yeah, another manless land. Untracked effect, I think that came up before. So no creature can attack if it attacked during its controller's last turn. Hate attackers, prevent attack, upkeep cost, which is cumulative upkeep. So this idea of an untracked effect, untracked effect, there's four cards here that have that, fall into that category. Battle Cry, Halls of Mist, Island Sanctuary, and the Quartus Champion. If I just clarify when they were first printed. And you can probably realize the, the problems with untracked effects in, in Magic and possibly why there aren't that many um, versions of it. So that's a limited edition alpha. Okay. What's the prices on these? Just out of curiosity. Um, let's go into four. Oh, 512 bucks. So what's the nicest? Something about, yeah. So fourth edition one. Oh cry, Horns of Mist and Quartus Champion. That was reprinted for Masters 25. And oh, there's a nice promo version of that as well. Okay. What else do we want to learn about Falls of Mist? I haven't really been into Cube Cobra yet in this episode. I might loop back around in a moment. I mean, I suppose with this, a, a little bit more focused on 
the artwork and the whole cycles thing really Quick as you can attack if it attack during his control on his last turn. So yeah, we've got a lot quite a number of lockdown cards here, I suppose. Sort of fun police cards, I think, as they tend to get called. And if I go back here. To, oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to look at um, where are we? Let's find the other ones. So we've got, yeah, Glacial Chasm on Cobra. What sort of interesting synergistic cards might we have here? Yeah, I was actually tempted to go down um, this rabbit hole um, because I think I'm right in antiquities, and I'll have to save it for a future episode. Um, was of a period where they're doing like multiple pieces of artwork for the same cards. So that's pretty interesting as well there yeah there were so many options when I, I thought you know I fancy doing another land episode um, and uh, it, it ended up I ended up settling on Ice Age it's probably the longest I've ever spent deciding you know what to do for a, a scar um, for a Scryfall shenanigans episode actually this this particular one I knew I wanted to do land but I was really I'm in an R in over which sets and what angle I would take and I just sort of spotted so it's really spotting these sort of the combination of the fact there were you know the two cycles of um dual, dual lands with the pain and the sh and the depletion but then we had the cycle of snow lands and you know three additional lands which were quite you you know unique that really sort of sold me on doing this particular set so yeah and then ice flow which I think Oh, some old, oh, we've got some old school, yeah, other Ice Age stuff. There is, what is it about Ice Age? I know, yeah, I find it a little bit irritating with the, around that period with cumulative upkeep. But I can remember when I opened the packs and I, I could kick myself now that I never filmed it. There's a, quite a lot of early stuff on the channel, which for whatever reason didn't get filmed. And I sort of often think, you know, I see the cards and I think, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure I filmed that and then find out that I didn't. Um, and that's, yeah, one time. Um, although the good thing is yeah, I've still got the the cards and I have been through them. So at least we've got that. But, yeah, something about Ice Age. That might be another nice one to do, um, like revisit, you know, the, the, the old deck building videos I used to do and I'll do a one for Ice Age. Might be quite fun, just as an excuse to look at the artwork. Just all this icy goodness. And the the double, in like the um, multicolour cards are interesting as well. In the oh yeah, there's, there's the um, 
So what's it? Safe Haven was originally from The Dark, but this version with the white border would have been from Chronicles. And I think, I'm pretty sure I do have a copy of Safe Haven. Wow, Meek Stone. Oh yeah, glasses of Urza. Oh. I mean, this is why stuff like you know, cubes are just so cool because you just get this lovely selection of like all your favorite cards. Okay, so So we've already looked at the price. I mean, what do we get? Do we get much from looking at EDH rep ranking? Not sure. Obviously, the Painlands bubble to the top. Then you get these interesting utility lands, which don't generate mana. And then the depletion lands bring out the rear, and then the the snow colored lands here. I mean, I don't know stats wise, what's it going to say? Yeah, I'm not sure how quite how to read the numbers here, to be quite honest with you. Oh, 22 decks with Timberland Ridge in them. I wonder how you can synergize with the depletion counters or mess around with them. And then finally, some people might argue I've saved the best till last. Let's have a look at the actual basic lands that featured in the set. So I'm going to blow this right up now so we can really take some time to take this all in. So we've got the planes here. These are lovely. And of course, some of these look like they wouldn't be at home. Um, sorry, they they might be at home, used on the snow-covered lands, but they're not the snow-covered lands. These these islands looking nice and sort of spiky, as well. Oh, it does make me want to go through my land box. These would have been featured on an early No Hand No Land episode, I'm sure. Oh, look at the swamps. And these, this is really nice when you're getting close to these. Look at this. It's tempting to blow these up even more, but they might go a bit too big. Spoil the effect. And the, this is why I remember when I'm sort of opening the packs, this style of mountain, because you would have had um, basic lands in the starter packs. You had quite a few in there. So you could sort of just you know, get, start playing. But yeah, this sort of style of mountain artwork I've always really liked. I don't know how much these are now. Oh, they're not too bad. I mean, okay, you'd, for EDH you'd have to buy quite a number of them, wouldn't you? But I've seen worse. Oh, 
the needs of a certain quirkiness about them. I think out of these, I don't know what's my favourite really with this, they've all got their own appeal. How much of these? Uh, 44 cents. I think I've pointed out before as well that I, sometimes these little things that I love on cards from certain periods, so you know, like this. You can see like the bordering around here, this inner bordering here. You know, all these different tech, you know, that give this sort of interesting textures. I mean, I, it, could you just imagine what this stuff would look like in foil? That'd be crazy. I mean, I can't imagine that's ever been done with these, but yeah. I mean, to me, that's something I might have to buy into. Um, Uh, let's have a look. Basic lens by the same artists. So forest by the same artists. Okay. Hmm. Keep forgetting to do this actually because this takes you down some interesting rabbit holes. Um. Oh, here we go. Yeah, look. So. Oh, of course, the theme decks, yes. I forgot about that. The theme decks had... Did they do that for all of them? What, there would have been five theme decks. Um, okay. So yeah, they put them in the, okay, they put them in the new borders. Yeah, I, that had completely slipped my mind actually. But again, because it's it was the theme decks, there would be no capacity there to um, have, yeah, like a full version, because it was just a one-off of the decks. Oh, I wonder how much they, they are. They're still pretty reasonable actually. Well, say reasonable, not, not to... As high as I think. Oh, okay, so there was the ones done for the unglued. Yeah, but they're expensive. But there, oh, look at those. Aren't they nice? Look as well, they put them in the... This was this um, Deck Masters. We got them on Arena. <laughs> I think we saw that before, didn't we? With with some of this real sort of slightly more obscure artwork that doesn't get reprinted and it's sort of, it's cropped up online. Where was that? This one here. Oh yeah. Okay, that is, oh, arena again. I got excited there. <laughs> okay. Oh, and there's the, yeah, the beat down box set. That's in the starter one. Right. Okay. Oh well, you live in hope. Maybe one day they'll reprint these in foil. Who knows? So there we have it. That was it. really interesting, I think. That's fascinating to see. Yeah, these different lands from uh, Ice Age, both in terms of the non-basic lands, the basic lands that were snowlands, and the basic lands that were not snowlands. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now, and I will catch you in a future episode.